What's happening? What's popping? What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another great edition of Simone with the Spears. I'm Simone, I'm bringing you guys a daily sports talk. So if you're new here, if you're old here, and you haven't already subscribed to the channel yet, make sure you start what you're doing. Leave a comment, subscribe, keep rock with me. Also, make sure you check out the many links down below. The first link is to buy me a coffee to help fuel this channel that you love so much. The second link is to shop the official Simone with the Spears a merch collection, get you the classic tee, the wavy tee, or the brand new flower dot crew neck that I've been rocking lately. And lastly, guys, turn your notification bells on because the videos are coming live. Boom, 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 boom. From now into forever. So don't miss a single drop. But guys, we got a lot of G to get into, especially now that the draft is over. There's so much to dive into when it comes to our birds. Yo, we got a lot to get into. So like I said, make sure you tap in. But today we're going to be talking about the Philadelphia Eagles new look offense. And when I tell y'all I'm excited for the season, I'm excited for the season. We legitimately had the worst wide receiver core in the NFC East. And now we have the best wide receiver core in the NFC East and one of the best wide receiver cores in the NFC. Per big period. But y'all, a lot of stuff changed for this offense. This offense is going to look brand new next season. This changed, all these changes, offseason changes, we added A.J. Brown. We, we drafted Cam Jurgens in the second round, a center. We drafted um, Grant Call Katera. Y'all, it's going to be a while before I get that. Tight end out of SMU in the sixth round. And then in free agency, offense-wise, we signed Zach Pascal, wide receiver from the Indianapolis Colts. So let's talk about how all of these additions are going to change our offense and how some of these players are going to be negatively and positively affected. Now, we know overall Jalen Hurst is the biggest, biggest, biggest winner of this offseason. Well, the fans were the biggest winner, but player-wise, Jalen Hurst was the biggest winner. We beefed up the offensive line. We beefed up the wide receiver core. We, we traded for his best friend and got him a big body X wide out target. So Jalen Hurts, and we solidified that we're locked in with him for the next season. Um, outside of that, Devonta Smith, obviously next biggest winner. Devonta Smith has somebody else with him on the outside, gaining some attention, which is going to leave Devonta Smith way open. And just overall, our passing game took a huge leap this offseason by adding A.J. Brown. Devonta Smith said that he wanted a veteran in the room, a veteran wide receiver, and he got that in um, A.J. Brown. Now, A.J. Brown is a veteran, but he's still super young, which is why the team overall is winning. I mean, this guy's going to be 25 years old when the season starts, and he's already been a pro bowler and solidified himself as a top receiver in this league. Now, y'all know I kept saying um, when I did my, like, offseason preview for the Eagles, I said I want to draft defense and I want to get a veteran wide receiver, a big body wide out. And that's what we got in A.J. Brown. And he's going to be the perfect complement to Devonta Smith on the outside. We have a big body receiver who's so hard to tackle, so hard to bring down, can get those contested catches, can win those one-on-ones opposite of like the speed um, and gadget of Devonta Smith on the other side. Now, we know that, and especially with Dallas Goddard, there's nobody you can double team on our offense because you double team Devonta Smith, Dallas Goddard, and A.J. Brown going to eat. You double team A.J. Brown, Devonta Smith, Dallas Goddard going to eat. You double team Dallas Goddard, and you just in a shitty place because that means Devonta Smith and A.J. Brown going to eat. So it's really like nothing you can do double team wise when it comes to those three guys. Um, and then... Of course, last season we were really, 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 really run heavy, but now we can have that balanced run and pass attack this season. But y'all, that's just the gist of it. But there's a lot to get into. We're going to go player by player and just talk about how this offense is going to look different this season. Let's start with Zach Pascal. So we signed Zach Pascal in the offseason when um, that was really our only move. Um, when we signed Zach Pascal, that was really our only really real move. I believe we signed him after we got Hassan Reddick, but that was our only offensive move. Um, so Zach Pascal was going to slide right in, um, probably be wide receiver three. Um, Devonta Smith, um, Quez Watkins, and um, Zach Pascal. But now that we added A.J. Brown, Zach Pascal is bumped down the depth chart, y'all. And 
the Zach Pascal is pretty much just a slot guy, and now that slot is still open with Devonta Smith and A.J. Brown on the outside. But y'all, Quez Watkins is looking like wide receiver three right now in the slot, which pushes Zach Pascal to wide receiver four. Um, Quez Watkins had a great year last year. He played every single game for the Eagles. He had 647 yards. He had um, 43 receptions and a touchdown. And like I said, he played in every single game. And he really broke out for the Birds. So that's his spot to that's his spot to lose. Um, we'll see in the offseason and training camp. But Quez Watkins has only been on the up, 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 up since joining the Eagles. So Zach Pascal, like I said, is looking like wide receiver four right now. Moving on to the wide, moving on to another wide receiver that's affected by all of the changes. Jalen Rager, we shouldn't be seeing much of Jalen Rager at all unless there are some injuries. Jalen Rager is pushed all the way down the depth chart now. And like I said, we should not be seeing any Jalen Rager. Now, Jalen Rager did wipe the Eagles out of his bio, Twitter, Instagram, all that G. And of course, um, Howie Roseman then were asked by the media a couple of times, would Jalen Rager be traded? And of course, you know, Howie Roseman, Mr. Press, press conference god just gave the typical answer oh Jalen Rager is part of the future that we see with the Eagles of course that doesn't mean you know what I'm saying they're gonna say that regardless but like I said Jalen Rager should not be seeing the field which is tough for Jalen Rager he probably going to request a trade because you know he's still young he wants to solidify himself in this league he wants to show what he could do and that requires play time and of course he wants to um, put himself in a position to get a long-term contract somewhere so he might be requesting a trade other than that somebody else who's a, uh, who is affected of course is jj ortega whiteside now jj ortega what is now moved to tight end he's not a wide receiver anymore according to um the birds he's going to be lining up at tight end this season and we will talk a little bit more about the tight end room in just a second but somebody else who got affected is Isaac Samala. So Isaac Samala is on the final year of his deal. So he has a lot to prove. But we already locked in Landon Dickerson at left guard. And we did draft Cam Jurgens, who's a bona fide center. Um, so Cam Jurgens is our second round pick out of Nebraska. Apparently he was hand picked by Jason Kelsey um, as Jason Kelsey's successor. So we already know Cam Jurgens is expected to slide into the center spot once i mean everything going right of course he will slide into the center spot when jason kelsey retires because this is expected to be jason kelsey's last year and landon dickerson has been thriving and striving at the left guard position so those are two starting positions that's taken off the table right now for isaac samala and like i said he's going to be going into a contract year so it's going to be interesting to see um how he adjusts and how we fit him in now to the office of line office of line um of the future so that's going to be interesting to see very much, very much interesting. And like I said, the tight end room is something that's going to change a lot as well. We've been talking about wide receiver. We've been talking about all that, ye, but we definitely needed to um, oomph up the tight end room because outside of Dallas Goddard, uh, we had Stoll and Tyree Jackson, and neither one of those guys really got any play time, and it just was a huge, huge drop-off outside of Dallas Goddard, and Dallas Goddard is someone who in himself can be inconsistent. But hopefully with the addition of A.J. Brown, you know, Dallas Goddard can be more consistent. He will obviously be open more, but again, it's just so easy to not drop a pass. Like, having A.J. Brown in the offense isn't going to change the fact that if you're wide open, don't drop. Don't make any drops, you know what I'm saying? AJ Brown can't fix Butterfingers. But let's talk a little bit more about the tight end room. So like I said, we did add Grant Colaterra. He was a six round pick out of SMU, but Grant is a guy who can honestly come in and make an immediate impact. Like I said, um, last season he had 465 yards, four touchdowns on 38 receptions in 11 games for SMU. We know that Dallas Goddard is a lock for the starting position, but if I'm Jack Stoll and I'm Tyree Jackson, I'm shaking in my boots in the tight end room because I honestly feel like Grant can bump them out because he has so much natural raw talent and he is a very good route runner as well. He definitely, of course, needs some development. He was a six round pick, but I can honestly see him immediately bumping out Stoll and Tyree Jackson. Lastly, in the running back room, we did sign an undrafted free agent, Kennedy Brooks from Oklahoma. He was an undrafted free agent, but y'all, the numbers in his production at Oklahoma cannot be denied. This guy had three 1,000 yard rushing seasons at Oklahoma. He only played three seasons because he did opt out 
in um, 2020 because of COVID, but he had 31 touchdowns in total over those three seasons, averaging seven yards per carry. And like I said, he had over a thousand yards rushing in each of those um, three seasons at Oklahoma. So this is a guy we could see come in and honestly compete and have a spot in this running back room with Miles Sanders and Ken, um, Kenneth Gainwell. Two guys, Kenneth Gainwell was a sleeper for us. We got him in the fifth round last season out of Memphis, and he came in, had an immediate impact. Kennedy Brooks, even though he's an undrafted free agent, I definitely see the talent in him as well. So it's going to be exciting to see him compete and likely have a spot in that running back room. But guys, like I said, this offense is going to be crazy, but it's going to be great to see the changes. And like I said, these guys got to compete at training camp and all that you need to earn a spot. But y'all, make sure you like this video, leave a comment, subscribe, keep rock with me. We're going to talk about our new look defense tomorrow, and we have a lot more to get into. But until next time, 